Okay, so we look at Death Stranding at 21 by 9. This is certainly a unique game, and unique games are always going to get a positive outlook from me from the start. Taking risks is always a good thing, otherwise things will never excite and surprise us. So whilst I had heard mixed reviews of this game before playing, I did come in totally open to it, and I have to say I found myself really enjoying an experience that is a totally different one to what I could have expected. But anyway, let's have a look at the ultra-wide support. So the great news is that this has 21 by 9 support out of the box. The only shame is that it's the 2560 by 1080 kind, not 3440 by 1440. As you know, whilst both these are classed as 21 by 9 screens, 2560 by 1080 is ever so slightly taller in aspect ratio than 3440 by 1440. So on the latter, you get small, and I do mean small, black bars on the sides. So the 1440 resolution default option is 3386 by 1440. It's really not a massive problem, but nonetheless, it's something that shouldn't have happened. The great news is that we already have a fix, the great work by Faster Than FTL, who posted up a fix. It requires a nice and easy hex edit, which, if you've already followed any of my previous videos, is a very classic ultra-wide tweak needed for many games. So first, you need to open up your hex editing software of choice. I recommend HXD, I'll link to it in the description. Then open up the Death Stranding EXE within HXD, Control R, hex values, search direction, set it to all, and search for 55, 55, 15, 40, and replace the hex string with, if you're on 3440 by 1440, 8E E31840. There are also fixes for 5120 by 2160 and a host of other ultra wide resolutions, so be sure to check the whole list out below. Then hit replace all, save, and off you go. Thanks again to Faster Than FTL. Really great to see the support in the community between people is as strong as ever. Now, that said, many people will be totally fine with not bothering to do the fix, and I get that. The black bars, by default, are very small and don't exactly encroach enough to make a massive difference. So if you want a super easy life, just play with it how it is out of the box. As for any specific issues with the fix and gameplay, I haven't found anything unique to the game that breaks once you've done it, so it should be totally fine to use. So yeah, gameplay correctly shows off more on the sides of the screen with no pop-in or clipping issues. Cutscenes are all ultra-wide. The menus do only really use the 16x9 or 4x3 section of your screen space, but the sides aren't cut off, using the world behind to fill it out or blend to black. The only place that I found any serious potential for a problem was in the map screen, where on the right-hand side, you can barely tilt the screen enough to see all the info. It's fine, but yeah, a close call. All in all, minimal issues that I can find. Thankfully, it's really not that hard of a fix to implement. Performance-wise, this ticks a good few boxes. So there are a decent set of graphics options to tweak, and they do each have a noticeable impact on visuals and performance, from what I found. So you should be able to make this run as best as possible for your setup. I did find that I had to lock my FPS to a cap of 60 because whilst generally I could maintain high settings and get FPS in excess of 60, notably more in some moments, the FPS dips are frequent and heavy, resulting even with G-Sync in a slightly stuttery experience. This was at 30 for 40 by 1440 on a GTX 1080 Ti, so on higher cards you may be able to smooth out these drops. And graphically, it is a pretty beautiful world. It excels far better at delivering a gorgeous natural world rather than the bland man-made areas, but luckily you'll spend far more time in the natural world than anywhere else. General PC support wise, things are also very rosy. We have a wide selection of general options, from full controller and mouse and keyboard support, surround sound support, key remapping for everything, game UI visual tweaks, etc. I can't fault the effort put into allowing us to customise our experience to fit us best. There are a plethora of games that do a far worse job. Gameplay-wise, a lot of people have called this first and foremost a walking simulator, but no, I'd say first and foremost it's wanting to be a movie. There are a lot of cutscenes. Then number two is the walking simulator bit. But as silly as both of these sound, and as much as I'd like the game, and as much as I'd like games to avoid trying to be like movies most of the time, in this case it really works. We really benefit from our ultra-wide screens filling up the multitude of cutscenes, but yeah, the story is enthralling, a tense thriller that is superbly well acted, well told, and is told well through the actual characters live in-game. 
I personally found it the real driver for continuing to play, and gameplay is decent. It's so unique that whilst it does get somewhat tiresome to continually manage all your items that you're carrying and ensure that you plod along to your destination as unscathed as possible, if you're in the right mindset, happy to slow down your gaming experience, something that frequently is attempting to be sped up faster and faster with each new game release, it's actually a lovely, unique tale that will not leave a bitter taste. Except for the egregious monster advertising, which is so ridiculous, it's kind of funny. So yes, I'd say give this a go. It's got solid ultra-wide support, whether you bother to do the fix or not. And I'm going to give it a WAF score of 4, that's with the fix. The gameplay, whilst extremely unusual, is not bad. And the story is compelling. But yes, I still totally understand that this will be a bit marmite and split opinions of whether it's worth your time or not with some people. So I hope that gives you some information on how the game runs at 20 on by 9. Give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 20 on by 9, head over to my channel, the WAF website. Hope you'll have covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, links to my Patreon page in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.